Hey YouTube, welcome back to my channel. This is Nathan Daly and I'm your law enforcement translator here to provide insight on difficult current event topics. You guys listen, I know it's been a very, very long week. It's been a lot going on. There's been so much, so much taking place in this country. And listen, we're going to talk about something in particular in reference to the Buffalo, New York shooting um, in regards to the evil deeds that that suspect did, taking those lives of those innocent people. It's unacceptable. Completely unacceptable, you guys. And I want to share with you a news clip in reference to, uh, I think this happened on CNN. Don Lemon was interviewing one of the employees of the store. And she starts to, she starts to go over and describe exactly what happened from her perspective on what it felt like the moment she heard the gunshots. I think this is very important because another thing is that she is the one who called the police initially for what we believe. She made the first 911 call. Um, in reference to the incident unfolding, she starts to describe the events, you guys, and it's very, 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 very sad um, just hearing her describe the information um, and what she ended up doing and then what she ended up seeing as well. It's very, very, very heart wrenching. And so um, I will say this. She talks about the 911 operator when she made the call. And how rude that operator was. And not only that, the 911 operator eventually ended up hanging up on her, right? She had an issue with her whispering while she was trying to give information, say, hey, we need the police here to this location. Someone is shooting. You guys, listen, this is a very, very interesting thing. Um, this is not uncommon. This has happened before where you have a dispatcher who is very rude or very disrespectful to a, to a, a, a person calling in, complaining of a crime in a very life and death situation and they do not take that person seriously and ultimately people end up losing their lives or someone gets hurt severely. Um, so according to the 911 supervisor, that dispatcher has been suspended pending termination. Now, my personal opinion, I believe when situations like this and there's been a blatant disregard to do your job properly, especially when someone loses their lives behind it, you guys, I do believe that should be a criminal offense. Right. And so, again, as public servants, we are held at a higher standard. There's no excuse for it. Right. And so, again, uh, this is a complete nightmare that people were actually living in real time. And though it may have happened quickly, I assure you the terror in that moment felt like forever. So I want to play this news clip. I think it's very important for us to hear her accounts of the situation. And then I'm going to explain to you how the dispatcher was supposed to handle that call and then how officers are supposed to respond to that actual scene. So let's go ahead and dive into it. Uh, it's going to be a very interesting description of events, you guys. Okay, a store employee called 911, but because she needed to speak in a whisper, she says the emergency dispatcher got angry with her and hung up. Now, the dispatcher is suspended and may lose her job. The employee joins me now. Her name is Letitia Rogers, an assistant office manager at the supermarket. Letitia, thank you so much for joining us. How are you? I'm good. How are you? I'm doing very well. Thank you. Listen, uh, let's start with where you were when the shooting happened. Tell us how this started for you. Um, it was about 2.30 in the afternoon. I was at the service desk working with two other coworkers. I had just sent one of the young ladies on lunch, and me and my other coworker were working. I was actually on the phone with a customer. She had a customer at her window. And then all of a sudden, you just heard these, you heard and felt these really two large booms. And we just kind of stopped and looked like, what was that? And um, let me let me say this real quick, you guys, for those who don't know, if you've never shot a rifle before, what she's explaining or describing is very accurate. You know, the, the concussion of a rifle going off, you can feel it, right? It's it's very vibrational, especially depending if you're in a closed in area. It's very, very loud um, and you can literally feel it. You can really feel like it's almost like standing next to a speaker in a nightclub, a giant speaker, and you feel the vibrations going through you. Um, so by her describing that, I think it's very, very interesting, but it's also very accurate. Um, so again, very interesting accounts as she, she, she goes, walks us right back through that day. Then I looked up out the window and I saw this customer, this, this lady, her shopping cart she just stopped and she just had this really funny look on her face and then she just turned to run and that was only like a few seconds but it seemed way longer than that 
And next thing you know, you just kept hearing boom, boom, boom. And you hear them coming inside the store. And all we could do was just drop to the ground. Mm. The young lady I was working with, she um, proceeded to open the door and she crawled out on her stomach. I couldn't move that fast. So I just laid down flat on the floor and got against the counter and hope, praying that he didn't see me. And during this whole time, it's just constant, just shooting. He won't stop. It just is constantly going. And I was trying to think fast. And I'm like, I have to call 911. So I reached in my back pocket because my phone was back in my back pocket. And I dialed 911. And it takes you to like an op- like operator. You have to go th- like go through first. And then it gives you to the operator. So it sounded like he was going back to the store. But he's still, as this is all going, he's just still shooting and just shooting. It just sounds like you're in the middle of a battlefield. And... When the lady came on the phone, I proceeded to whisper because I didn't know how many people there were in the store or anything. I just didn't want to be heard. And I said, ma'am, please send help. I gave her the address and I said, please send help. There's a person in the store shooting. And she proceeded to say to me, what? I can't hear you. Why are you whispering? You don't have to whisper. They can't hear you. So I said, ma'am, he's still in the store. He's still shooting. And I'm around this time, he's literally still shooting in the background. And I can hear him. Like, you can hear the shooting coming back to the front. So let me let me explain to you guys how this piece works. Um, there's two issues here. If she had called 911 from the actual work phone of the store, the department, the police department or the dispatcher would have had the address, would have had the location. But I will say this, though, the common sense behind this entire thing is that, of course, you hear the gunfire in the background. Obviously, you hear something loud, you hear a person whispering. At that point, the dispatcher should have used enough two plus two common sense to say, OK, well, obviously uh, you're whispering for a reason. And so at this time, you hear the gunshots. It's, it's very, very distinct, distinguishable. The dispatcher should have just acknowledged the fact that, okay, hey, what's your location? We will send officers there. Listen, the dispatcher doesn't need all the information to dispatch officers, right? We could be sent to what we call as unknown, trouble unknown type of call, basically meaning that, hey, we weren't able to gather enough information from the from the complainant, from the caller, but you need to start in that direction in order to investigate. Be mindful. I heard gunshots in the background unknown situation unknown at least the officers know that they're going into a situation that's potentially dangerous so uh, you know that whole thing with the dispatchers is extremely unacceptable right and so and again it's because she called with her phone her cell phone her personal phone so her information is going to populate in the system if she's called 911 before from that phone her address her personal address will come up but if she had used the store's um uh business in, um, business line then I'm pretty sure they have called the police before and that would have that record would have popped up and the dispatcher would have known the exact location. Uh, so that's just a little side tidbit um, to just kind of give you guys an insight on how the system is set up. Um, but unfortunately, she still did a poor job. Again, she came with an attitude. Clearly something was going on and she did not exercise the patience and professionalism needed to do her job properly. Extremely unfortunate. So out of nervousness, I dropped my phone, but it was in front of me. So the phone never hung up. And because I didn't have it to my ear, I couldn't hear what she was saying. And she said something and then she hung up the phone. So I hurry up and put my phone on silent. So my phone didn't ring out loud. Cause I did, my phone rings loud when it, when it starts ringing. I didn't want to be heard. So I had to think of the next person to call and I called my boyfriend. And I called them and I said, babe, you got to call 911. It's a person in the store shooting. But I'm saying it in the same whispering tone that I talked to her with. And he says, in the store? I said, yes, he's still in the store and he's shooting. Please call 911. He says, okay. Soon as I hung up with him, a coworker of mine FaceTimed me. And same thing with him. I whispered on the phone. He asked me, where are you? And I said, I'm at the front desk. I said, you have to call 911. Please call 911. He says, I'm coming to get you. Just get up and run out. And I said, I'm scared. I don't want to run. I think he's still in the store. And 
I said, just please call 911. He says, okay. As I hang over him, now the shooting stops. The store is dead silent. The music, I don't know how the music got turned off, but the music was off that plays in the store. And it's just a complete eerie, creepy silence in the store. And you can hear him walking around. Wow. And it just sounded like he was walking like on glass. And you could hear it crunching under his feet. And I could hear him like getting closer to where I was. And can you imagine how how utterly terrifying that is? You know, the way she's describing it, you know, I when I first watched this, I could actually picture her, her body pushed up against um, you know, the wall, just afraid to move, afraid to to make any sound, af afraid to just blink, period. And just the the the, the that moment of horror, right? This is a you guys you guys, listen, I watched the video. I watched the video from the moment he got out of his car and he immediately started shooting at anybody he could see. Um, man, I, I, I can't even... I'm picturing what she's saying from when he came into the store and I'm imagining where she was actually sitting at or where she was hiding at. Um, when he came in, I'm, I'm picturing everything as I'm, I'm playing it through my head. You guys, uh, <laughs> she describes him walking and she can hear him stepping on glass, right? As he's kind of walking past. She describes how eerie the environment is. It's complete silence. She said, you know, she doesn't even know how the music got cut off. And I'm, I'm sure the music was still on, but... What ends up happening in that moment, you know, the the fear mixed in with adrenaline, you get this thing what we call tunnel vision to where you're just you're so gone in the moment. And uh, I, I couldn't imagine what she felt, those who survived, those who who lost their life, what they were feeling in that moment. The things, the the sinister things that he did. Um, that just that entire incident, you guys, um, what he did to people who were who were still clinging on to life. He he added additional shots to them. And. Yeah. <laughs> I'll say this, though, um, you know, if I was in charge of issuing out the punishment, you know, I would I would leave it up to the family to decide. Right. The families of the of the, of the loved ones, I would let them decide his punishment outside of court so i just yeah this whole thing was just beyond unacceptable the work phone just kept ringing and kept ringing and kept ringing and kept ringing it just wouldn't stop and he was talking you could hear him talking i didn't know if he was talking to somebody in the store i didn't i didn't know what was going on but you can hear i can't hear what he's saying but you can hear him talking and as I hear him getting closer, I just press myself, like, trying to get flat. Like, Yeah, so she's right. In the video, you guys, he's talking to himself. Like, he's kind of giving himself a pep talk. You know, he's breathing heavy. You know, and I thought that was very weird. It was almost as if he was talking to someone, right? It kind of gave me a vibe, like, you know, did he have someone in maybe like a like an earbud or something or... or Right. Was this like a supernatural type? Of, I'm talking to someone that I that I can't see. Or is it something in his mind that, you know, or is he is he actually talking to himself in third person? But, you know, nonetheless, I, I do recall hearing him, uh, you know, kind of talking to himself. I thought it was extremely creepy, but it, it spoke to a lot. Right. It could be a lot of different things. Um, but but, you know, for her to have heard that she had to have been extremely, extremely close um, to this. Uh, to him when he was walking through crazy can on the ground and up against the counter praying to god that he wouldn't see me the erie county executive mark polencar said that there was an inquiry and explain how the 911 call center looked into your call i want you to listen to this and so on Sunday, they went through all the calls. They identified this one call, the issue associated with it. It was completely unacceptable. Uh, on Monday, the individual was put on administrative leave pending a hearing which will be held on May 30th. 
in which our intention is to terminate the 911 call taker. Now he is confirming that the dispatcher is currently suspended and will face disciplinary, a disciplinary hearing where the county will seek her termination. Mm -hmm. uh, so you've gone through a lot. Is that satisfactory to you? Are you satisfied with that? I mean, I'm not a cold hearted person at all and I wouldn't want nobody to try to get me fired, but. Now, my personal opinion, do we need to wait a few days in order to have a hearing before we determine whether or not what she did was in violation of her policy or the policies of the department as a dispatcher? No, those things could have been identified in the moment, right? That maybe a day or two to, to, to read, go over the, the 911 call, hear how she handled the situation. If there's no justification for her professionalism and things of that nature and you hung up on her, mm -mm. I think uh, outside of being terminated, this should be looking at potential criminal charges, right? And I don't know. What do you guys think? Do you feel like her being terminated is enough as a dispatcher? Um, and I guess we still have to find out all whatever the other evidence is that they have against her that might, um, might present a problem that she may have violated the policies of the department. So I don't know. I don't know. But maybe I'm, I'm talking in my feelings and my emotions. So uh, I guess we'll just wait and find out. But if he's already concluded that they're going to terminate her anyway, anyways, why do we need to wait? Right is right and wrong is wrong. And that was absolutely wrong the way she handled that situation. So, I mean, I do feel like she should be terminated. I mean, like you see on TV and movies or even on real life cases, they'll play the dispatch call back and the operator is calm and trying to keep you calm and trying to keep you talking to get information. I didn't have that from her at all. It was just like, I was just bothering her. And I feel like when she hung up on me, she never called back. I feel like she left me to die. And I legit thought I was gonna die that day. You thought you were gonna die. Do you know any of the people? You know, Aaron Salter. I knew Aaron Salters and I knew. <sighs> mm, mm, mm. You guys, I'm going to stop it there. Um, <clears throat> she said the way she handled the situation she felt like she left her to die. Man, you know, that's deep, you guys. Um, what are your thoughts? What do you think? Do you feel like uh, the 911 dispatcher should be held to more of a stiffer penalty, like, you know, a criminal charge? Or do you feel like the termination is, is enough? And I think, unfortunately, listen, you guys, dispatchers, their job is difficult. I'll never take that away from them. And it's very difficult. You do have to have patience, like anything, like being a public servant is not for the, 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 the sensitive. It's not for the over emotional. You have to have a certain level of mental fortitude you guys, unfortunately, we have some people who do these jobs and these professions, and they're just not good at it. They're not designed. They're not built for. It's a lot of stress. Uh, it requires a lot, a lot of um, uh, mental ingenuity to do this job or jobs similar to it. And so, again, I'm not taking away from that. Our dispatchers, they hear a lot of stuff, and um, and it's it's emotional. It's taxing. I get it. It's stressful. I get it. Um, but unfortunately, guys, as you know, in this profession, there's no room for error. And when you make errors or when you blatantly um, do things like not do your job properly, you have attitudes with someone calling in, um, you never know what's happening on the back end. And it can come back uh, severely and cause a lot of issues. It can bite you in the end um, and it can cost someone their safety or ultimately their life. And as you know, in this situation, it costs people their lives. One would argue that if she had did her job properly, the police could have gotten there sooner and could have saved maybe one or two additional lives before that suspect continued out his uh, his rage, his, his evil rage on, on that community inside that grocery store. So um, <clears throat> anyways, uh, let me know your thoughts, you guys, with that. Um, you know, again, keep those families and the community in your prayers. You know, listen, they're down a grocery store. Right. They're down a grocery store. A lot of lives have been lost. A lot of lives have been impacted and have changed forever. And, you know, I honestly, man, I'm at a loss for words, to be honest. I'm a complete loss for words. So anyways, you guys keep them in your prayers. And with that, have a good night. God bless.